Thomas and friends have always had voices. If it was by one person or by multiple people, they have always had voices, but who are the best of the best? After a while of just listening to talking choo-choo trains for a few days, here is my ideal Thomas voice cast. And I'm not counting the narrators, at least for the main cast. So let's start off with Thomas. So he was pretty easy to decide, honestly. And my pick is Eddie Glenn. Morning, Henry. What's the matter? And I'm collecting one, two, three, four, five, six trucks of special Island of Sodor coal for you. But I wish I could make Mr. Conductor feel better too by finding him. He has that British accent that isn't super high pitched. Young, but not too young, and has a range of emotions like cross, cheeky, confused, and scared. And it works so well in all eras of Thomas. I was gonna choose Martin Sherman because I'm biased, and I know no one really likes him that much. This is mainly the main Thomas voice I grew up with. Now, Edward. My voice is Heath Wickham. Oh my, Harold! You're quite the hero! I'd like to be a hero! He has that old man voice, but still has energy in him. And of course, British. And you can tell if he's sad or frustrated by his voice. And it kind of works in his classic era persona. But Keith just does a great job with Edward, even though not that many people really like him that much. Now, we have Henry, which was very hard to choose. And this is definitely going to be a very unpopular opinion. I chose Kevin Frank for Henry. Of an engine whose magic makes her more powerful than Diesel will ever be. That's why he wants to find her. My smoke box doesn't feel sunny. It feels stuffed up. And Diesel is after the lost engine. Sure, he doesn't have that much time on screen, and but the time he does have is great. It's like CGI Henry's voices are great. His US one is probably my favorite, but the UK voice just gets annoying after a while. Kevin's voice does have that nasally voice sometimes, but it still works when he's just regularly talking. He gives him that sympathetic and kind voice, but still easily frustrated and rude voice. Which works for both sides of Henry's character. It's a very underrated character voice, honestly. Now the big blue engine, Gordon, which is another Tabmar voice. Neil Crone, or Almonton's good voice, but we don't talk about that. Small, 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 teeny weeny weeny. And I, I'm a big blue engine who knows everything. <laughs> but you weren't on time, little Tom. Oh, I think we can take care of ourselves. But Neil did an amazing job. He gave Gordon that pompous and grand, angry voice when he is, and just sounding more natural compared to Alec Baldwin, which he is still good, but the downside is that he doesn't have that big brother voice, if you get what I'm saying, like George Carlin. A great voice for Gordon, and honestly, no wonder he returned. Here's James, who I chose as his voice is Rob Rackshaw, the US dub version. Yes, I have a special job tonight, Cranky. I'm taking the Cranky, even this one. Whoa. <sighs> He's by far the best James voice. He gives James that sassy, boastful self, but Carlin did a, did a great job too. But Rob fits all eras with his attitude and sounds very natural. And he just bounces off other characters super well and really fits in just the overall series. And a very fun voice, but Michelangelo's is better though, even though I'm not counting the narrators. Percy, who I chose, who is Nigel Pilkington. Hopefully I said that right. What are you doing here? One good turn deserves another. Wow, Thomas. Look at you, all spick and span. Hello, Thomas. I'm just having a quick wash before I start work. Hey! Who gives a wonderful performance. He gives Percy. He fits the CGI persona and classic series. Like that episode with Percy and Harold just works so well and gives me such classic series vibes. Don't have too much to say, but he is Percy. With him being able to tell all of Percy's emotions and give him those emotions. Now Toby the Tram Engine, who was kind of hard to choose because his voices were just on the same level for me, but I chose Clone Fior. To delay him, I've got to distract him. Mm. Mm. Good show. And if he finds her, I fear that will destroy us all. Yes, Gordon, even you. I cannot pronounce his name in the slightest, but why him? Well, he gives Toby that old man voice, but not a scared, wimpy grandpa, but a grandpa who still has a lot in him. Just captures Toby in a nutshell, but not his hair and CGI persona. Honestly, the voice direction for Magic Railroad, bar 2, is almost perfect. And now the guy who runs the railway, Sir Topham Hatt. 
My choice is Keith Wickham, the UK version. Strawbales or eggs? Now I see you have them all here. Cranky is broken, and you, Thomas, think it's a good time to try being a bird. Because the UK and US version is basically the same, but he has a British accent in one of them, so it fits more in the series. His voice has an authority figure voice, but a guy who can still have fun and feels very genuine. I mean, he is the fat controller. And honestly, no one else can be him. Now, for the rest of these characters, I am counting their narrator voices because they don't have that many voice actors. And be kind of boring just choosing the one voice actor they did. Start with Emily. Surprisingly, I chose Michael Angelus for Emily. It's no nice to copy the way others speak. You hurt Salty's feelings. I think he'll be helping the new farmer. He needs to deliver his vegetables around the island. I chose him because he gave her that soft motherly voice, but she can still be bossy or feisty, fitting both of her personalities. But I still don't understand why she has a Scottish accent. Even her UK voice has that too. But her voice actors are really close in terms of how good they are. But Angelus overall is the one I mostly enjoy. We have the number eight engine who is Duck the Great Western Engine. Which I went very basic for his voice, and I chose his CGI voice, who is Stephen Kinnam. Hopefully I said that right. There is only two ways to do things, Thomas. The Great Western way. I've been sent to get some fresh coal to replace it. He gives Duck that sternness that he has, and the happy Duck of his personality. I don't know what that sentence was. He is able to give Duck all these emotions and fits it all well with Duck's personality. Steven just gives Duck a great, genuine performance that fits him so well for all eras. And Michael Brandon's voice for Duck is just shit. But it's going to take even longer. Donna Douglas, I chose Rob Rackshaw and Joe Mills. Hey, hey. Then stop pulling. I'm no pulling. You are. Because they bounce off each other so well. And they have kind of hard Scottish accents, which work, and they both have unique voices, you can tell the difference between the two. But Michelangelis is a close second. Now we have Oliver, which I chose, George Carlin, who- He's rude too! He's taking Bulgy's passengers home and leaving Bulgy free to steal ours! Bulgy says he can get them to the big station before us! ...who gives Oliver a happy and frustrated voice. But it works so well for Escape. But he is very, very American. But it still works, but not really. <laughs> not too much to say, just the GOAT George Carlin tongue twister right there. Now for Oliver's companion, Toad, who I also chose George Carlin. I've got a plan, Mr. Douglas. May I stay here today and help Mr. Oliver? We are both Great Western and must stand together. Which gives him a sympathetic and just a charming Toad voice. But his CGI voice was so close, but I had to go with Carlin. And funny thing, Oliver's and Toad's CGI voices are the same in the show. A nice parallel between these two. Bill and Ben. I know these voices are super cartoony, but I don't care. It's Alec Baldwin. That's my line of cars, huffed Bill. Snot, it's mine, snorted Ben. Yours is over there. It's mine, snot, it's mine. Snot. These guys are just so funny and just so charming just to see them argue and bicker and very fun voices, and they fit them so well, but the CGI voices, again, are really close up this, but I'm just super nostalgic for Alec Baldwin's voice for them. Just goofy voices, but it works. Now, two non-rail characters. Bertie, which again, Keith Wickham. See you soon, Thomas. Hello, Thomas. What are you doing in there? Which is a great performance, which I love when he starts mocking Thomas. He's able to give Bertie a wide range of reactions and emotions, and his voice works in all eras of Thomas. Now finally the final character, which is Trevor, who I think George Carlin works so well. He's by the sea, so he's having a garden party to raise money for a seaside trip. He gives Trevor that sympathetic but very jolly character that he is, and it's so charming and gives me so like nostalgic vibes. But honestly, I hate his CGI, UK, and US voice. It, it's just not Trevor, it's so like Oh, how these all miss? Right, it's just so weird. That's why I chose George Carlin. That is my ideal Thomas voice cast. Sure, most of them don't work together. Like, you can't just hear George Carlin, Oliver, and Keith Wickham, Edward. It just, it's, it just doesn't work. But I don't care. This was just a super fun video to make. And tell me what your guys' ideal voice cast for the Thomas characters in this video in the comments below. 
Hank chuffed alongside. Hello. Hello there, I'm Hank Hill and I sell propane and propane accessories. And if this video does do well, I might make a part two. So thanks for watching and bye.